What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool looking stained glass window. So basically that means that you're going to have a window but it has some sort of a pattern with uh, different colors and you can place images there and it looks really cool. It's, uh, it's usually associated with some, uh, I, I guess you would call it church architecture but uh, you can use it for whatever you want. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. Okay, so let's get started. This is the project that I'm going to be using for uh, this uh, uh, stained glass win window. And this is the, the window in question. So basically, we've got this kitchen scene. And uh, let's just turn this window into a stained glass window. And for that, I need an image. So if I move Revit out of the way here, as you can see here, I've downloaded this image of a stained glass window. And it's not a perfect image, but it will do for what we need it to do. So I'm just going to hit Escape and maximize this. And now you need to go into your actual window family, go into Edit Type, and here you need to find some dimensions. So first you need to remember the height and the width. The height is 140 and the width is uh, 210. And just make sure to remember that. And uh, then uh, I'm just going to go here to glass panel material and it says glass. So I'm just going to open that up and change this material. So. I'm going to go here uh, and find uh, some glass materials and I'm going to choose this glass brick material. And let's just load it in. And if I go here to appearance, I'm going to explain now why I chose this material. Uh, first of all, we have an option of placing an image over here. Also for the transparency, also we have an option of placing an image there for transparency. And we've got this bump that we're just going to be turning off. So if I maximize this, it uh, it looks different. So it's not really, uh, doesn't have that brick effect. And for this color, of course, we're going to change to white. We don't need that uh, green tint. And uh, now we need to change this image. So to do that, I just go here to no image selected. As you can see, it's uh, kind of a link. So you click on that and you go to your desktop or wherever you saved your image. And now you can open this up. So you just go open and wait for a second. And there you go. Sometimes it takes a, a, a while for it to update. And while it's doing that, let's uh, change the scene to walls, uh, just because it's easier to, to view that as, as walls. And for the image fade, let's see, yeah, let's go to 100. Yeah, now it looks a lot better. But of course, it won't look any good until we change the transparency option and until we change the scale. Uh, so let's start off from scale. So you just uh, open this drop menu next to your image and you find edit image and you get this edit image dialog and now you remember those numbers. So for the width it was 210 and for the height it was 140. But first you check this lock proportions and you unlock those proportions so we can have uh, different proportions. So whenever you place an image it uh, Revit automatically turns it into a square which is uh, I guess quite unnecessary. So for the width, uh, let's go with uh, 210 and for the height, 140. And okay, that looks nice. Hit done. And there you go, it looks a bit better. But again, you can't really see anything because of this uh, ugly transparency map. So let's change that. So again, open this link up in transparency, go into your desktop or wherever you saved your full, your image, open that up. And uh, now we need to set this image to the same uh, setup we have for the image that's here in the gen generic uh, dialog. So let's go down here, open up the drop menu and go into edit image. And uh, first let's change the size. Again, uh, let's unconstrain these two and go with 210 and here with 140. And once we've done that, hit done. And this is what you get. And now maybe if we change this transparency amount to go to maximum and for the image fade, Let's see what happens if we fade it a bit. Yeah, and for translucency, go to maximum. 
and yeah, you fade it like this. You have you have to have these white spots. That's that's basically what you want to have. Uh, it I know it doesn't look that transparent at this point, but don't worry. When you render, it will be. So uh, right now, I guess we can just uh, hit apply. Okay. Again, apply. Okay. And as you can see, it's no longer letting light through because this is just a uh, regular view. But uh, let's try to go into ray trace and see what happens. And wait for a second uh, because uh, this is a complicated scene with uh, kind of light reflections and transparency elements. So it is going to take a, a while longer than just doing ray trace for some regular uh, scene. And here we go, this is what happens. So as you can see, uh, we have this uh, transparency going on, but uh, for the ray trace, it's not always going to give you the, the best uh, results. So let's just close out of that and go into your, straight into rendering. So just type it double R for the rendering dialog. And here for the settings, I'm going to set it to medium and with printer uh, quality and for the lighting uh, just set the sun settings to still to whatever you already have set up and here for this uh, scheme i'm going to go with interior sun only and later on i'm just going to be at, uh, adjusting the exposure so i'm just going to hit render and keep in mind this is going to take a while longer than it usually should because of of course all of the transparencies and uh, the light problems that your computer needs to solve. Now this doesn't look any better but that's why we need to go here into adjust exposure and make it a lot uh, brighter and this is basically what you get uh, once you crank up the brightness. Uh, as you can see it is transparent but uh, it's kind of set up in the wrong position. The center of the image is uh, where the maximum transparency lies and as you can see it's, uh, it's a bit offset upward and to the side and it's actually like offset half uh, of the image to the side and like a third uh, upward. So how do you change that? Well, let's hit escape now and go back into the window family, go into edit type, go into glass. Uh, okay, go here into edit material and here for this glass, go to appearance and maybe maximize this a bit just to see it better. And let's wait for a second. Yeah, uh, let's give it a bit more fade. I think this will help it a lot. And now we need to change both of these images. So go to open up the drop menu, go into edit image. And here for the position uh, for the X offset, which is the horizontal one, uh, give it uh, half of the length, which is 105 uh, centimeters. And for the Y offset, uh, let's give it a, uh, well, a third of this. So I don't know, let's go with 40 and see what happens. Uh, so do that. So 105 and 40, just hit done and do the same thing over here, edit image. Yeah, 105 and 40. Hit done. Okay, uh, this should work now. So hit apply. Okay, apply. Okay, and uh, just hit again double R for rendering. It will save the same settings you already have. So you just hit render. And this is what we have now. So we just need to move it a little bit more up, maybe to 80. So I'm just going to hit escape. And uh, yeah, this is the final edit. So just go here to class, again, select this, go to appearance, open up the drop menu, go into edit image. And uh, yeah, let's add 80 over here, hit done. Yeah, I made a mistake. It should be two thirds, not one. So 80, done, apply, uh, okay, apply, okay. And let's try it out, render. And this is basically what you get. Yeah, I guess I can move the image up a few more centimeters, but you get the point. I don't think it's necessary uh, to do this uh, in this tutorial. But anyway, you get the point. That's how you create a stained glass window in Revit. I hope you have learned something new and useful. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. And have a nice day.